Now, this is kind of complicated, so I want to step you through it, but these are considerations for doing reactions in what are called Michaelis-Menten kinetics. We can see here that on the uh, y-axis, again, we have concentration, and on the x-axis, we have time. And before, we saw simply the accumulation of product as shown in the orange um, uh, icon here. At the very beginning of a reaction, what is, are the circumstances? Well, we have four different things to think about that can be measured. We have the concentration of substrate. We have the concentration of the enzyme. We have the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex. And ultimately, we're going to have concentration of product, which is what we're interested in studying. Okay? At the beginning, the concentration of product is low, as you can see. And that's not surprising because the reaction hasn't had a chance to get started. The concentration of ES is low because there hasn't been an opportunity for the substrate to really encounter the enzyme very much. The concentration of the free enzyme, that is the enzyme not bound to substrate, is relatively high. You see it's coming down from the y-axis. And finally, the concentration of substrate is high because none of the substrate has reacted. So at the time zero, we have these circumstances going on, and these circumstances turn out not to be ideal for us to measure the enzymatic reaction. Now, as the reaction proceeds, we see changes to these entities. We see, first of all, that the concentration of substrate by the end of the reaction is low, and it's falling during the entire process. The concentration of the ES substrate, which started out at zero, is going higher, and we'll see that it will eventually sort of level off. We also see that the concentration of the free enzyme, which started out at a relatively high position, is falling. And it too will sort of level off uh, in time. And finally, we see, of course, that the concentration of product is going to start at the low and go to high by the very end. Well, I show you this graph not to complicate the picture too much, hopefully, but rather to demonstrate what we try to do in studying enzymatic reactions. In the very initial phase, I hope I've made the case for you that we're in a, a set of conditions called pre-steady state. Now, I'll explain what steady state means in a minute, but we have a cir circumstance where the reaction hasn't had a chance to get started, the enzyme isn't doing its thing, and everything in there is changing pretty rapidly. The change in substrate, the change in enzyme, the change in enzyme substrate complex, and the change in product. This is going to give us a lot of variability in a reaction. Now, I said we want to study initial velocity. But we want to be careful if we do it too soon, we may not get what we're after here. So it's important to think about really studying a, studying a reaction at a place where these things have sort of leveled off. Now, under conditions of steady state, what's actually happening is that these other quantities that were varying fairly rapidly in the very initial phase of the reaction will start to even out. And that's very important for our consideration. So we can see, for example, that in that early state, the concentration of free enzyme and ES complex are changing. The concentration of E is falling very rapidly, and the concentration of ES is rising very rapidly. However, in under steady state conditions, as we can see here, they have started to flatten out. They're not exactly linear, but they're much closer to linear than they were in that pre-steady state condition. That turns out to be important for us, because what we're interested in studying is the conversion of enzyme substrate complex into product. And so if we have a relatively constant concentration of enzyme substrate complex, then that decay or that falling into product that's actually happened is happening at a, a relatively constant rate. That's the place we want to be, and that's why it's important for us to be studying these reactions under steady state conditions. Steady state conditions, of course, again, meaning that these quantities are not varying significantly. Now, we can see now the overall plot of what's happening on here. The steady state conditions are where we make our measurements, and we see that this relatively linear portion of the plot for the concentration of free enzyme and concentration of ES complex uh, is happening under the conditions that we measure our enzymatic reactions. So in this presentation, we've seen some details now about how enzymes interact with substrate, how enzymes can manipulate energy to uh, make things happen the way they want, how at the, at the electron level, enzymes can accomplish what they do. And we've also learned something about the way that we, be, we study the uh, kinetics or the speeds of reactions. In another presentation, we'll put these together where we use this information to study some specifics in enzyme kinetics. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. 
Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.